we are back here again, uh, 840 Crews out here with Sam. Uh, he is at Stone Ridge Metalworks. Um, so he's been teaching us how to do some forging today. And uh, we're trying to just get uh, familiarized with that whole process. So Sam, thank you, appreciate it. Of course, it's great uh, to have you guys down here. Yeah, it's gonna be a great time. Stone Ridge Metalworks uh, is Sam's, uh, uh, is it a company or? So it's just a little side hustle I started when I was about 15. Uh, the Stone Ridge is a generational name and uh, I'm doing Metalworks, so it turned into Stone Ridge Metalworks. Perfect. Yep. That's awesome. And you have some awesome tools around here, so we're going to kind of go through a little bit of like what the tools are, and then we'll kind of just get into some footage of us, uh, you know, trying to not ruin things, so. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we'll have a good time and then we'll uh, we'll get to it. Sounds good. Thanks, Sam. The first thing we're going to feature is this anvil. It's a 200-year-old, 110-pound Peterite he acquired from a ranch in California that his grandfather used to work on. The next tool is this Devil Forge. This is a cheaper option that gets the job done. It's a two-burner unit that runs on propane, and it worked flawlessly the whole time we were there. That leads us into this small drill press. Sam says it works well for him, but the folding table base needs an upgrade. The next tool is this 10 inch bandsaw that's sitting on the same plastic folding table. He only had good things to say about the Recon brand. This is a 4x36 inch Porter cable belt sander that Sam hopes to replace soon. He also has a couple of these small belt files that help finish the blades. Along with a lot of other really cool old tools. We're starting today with these one inch straps of mild steel Sam picked up from the local metal store. You can see where the burner comes down, you want the burner right in the middle of the piece you're working on. So if you're trying to hit down right here on this part, you're gonna want the bulk of the blue flame right here. So you just gotta be careful where you're So the working temperature for the mild steel is gonna be about 1,660 degrees. Crazy hot. I'm gonna have this uh, heat block for your tong pan or your uh, steel pan. You don't have to use it, it's up to you. You'll just grip it down here. Then, when you're working on the anvil, you're gonna keep your elbow down straight and you're only gonna curve to, to uh, you're only gonna bend your elbow to a little shot. Otherwise, you're gonna be moving the piece all around the anvil and, and up the base and everything. So I already got the tips cut in. The first step is going to be to just knock in the tip right there. All right, and make sure you're swinging. I'm sure y'all not a swinging hammer, but make sure you're swinging with your, your shoulder, not your elbow. You'll get so hurt. All right, you want to throw your piece of steel in? Sure. Great, right, give it a second to heat up. So you're getting close. We want to be a little bit more red than that, or orange than that, so go ahead and throw it back in. And we're going to hit with the round side. Round side? Yeah, the round side's for shaping, the flat side's for smoothing. And you're going to get it right down there on the middle of the angle, flip it over. You're going to knock it in right there. makes this look too easy. It's a lot harder than it looks. Isolate the blade profile from the chain profile. So when we're, when we're isolating this blade material from the tank material, we're going to be using this corner right here. It's the cleanest part on the anvil. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually uh, 220 years old. It came from a ranch out in California. 110 pound Peter Wright. You can 
see here we're beating down that chain side to get it a smaller profile. Here he's portioning off the blade from the rest of the material. He'll save that material for another day. You can see how a little metal goes a long way. These tangs get pretty long and we're gonna fold it over to make a grip. Now we're going to fold the tang over into a grip. Unsurprisingly, it's not as easy as it sounds. This one took a few heating cycles to get it in the right shape. Notice Sam uses different parts of the anvil to get the metal to do what he wants. Next we clamp the blades into this vise and grind in the edge. The bell sander helps to align everything and keep everything straight, and then we wire wheel the knife to a uniform finish. You'll see here the difference between the raw forging and the ground spots. The 840 group that went with us today had an awesome time with Sam. He mentioned a few times that making is not a hobby, it's more of a lifestyle for him. Builders are just built differently. Sam is also inspired by another maker named Jason Knight, who says, be a maker, not a taker. From what you can see, Sam doesn't have a bunch of really expensive tools or a huge space. He's working out of his parents' garage, has basic tools, and accomplishes some really beautiful things. It's not about what you can afford, it's how you do it. Sam is a shining example of the people we at 840 want to represent. Hard-working, generous, quality-driven people. Thanks again to Sam at Stone Ridge Metalworks and the 840 Customs crew. It was a pleasure. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.